and Jay Davis. Mose Richardson was bent for a couple of games as a starter anyway. He's back as a starter today with Middleton Watson Dyer. And it's third and a yard for Wisconsin. 25 yard line. And Bell goes down. Looked like he got his feet tangled up with one of his offensive linemen. And Lamar Mills was there to make sure he was going nowhere fast. I, I think it was uh, Corey Lamer or, or the, his left guard. You're going to see it from behind here. And he's taking a reverse pivot. Means he's turning away from it. And it was Bell in number 75 that gets him. When you're reversing away from the play, you have to get your feet out of the way. And that was kind of a mystery by the quarterback that time. Sam Vite to punt. Scott McGowan back for Indiana. So it's three and out for the Badgers. They got close to Vite. They got away a pretty good punt. Goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. 40-yard kick with 9.39 to go first quarter. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Tim? So that defensive back on that one. Don't score with 9.39 left first quarter here in Bloomington, Indiana on an absolutely splendid October day. It's beautiful out here. Three wide outs again for Indiana. They'll show that set a lot today. They work from the 39-yard line. Loads it to Lewis at the 48-yard line, about a yard short of a first down. Gary, they told us they want to put Lewis in that slot receiver position today, and it's paying off so far early. What they're going to try to do is get them to reduce. This is Aaron Norvell right here, number 48, a linebacker matched up against Lewis. He's going to come down here and run a little option. That's a mismatch that you get because of your formation right here. And the Lewis and Green are just so good at that timing route that that's very tough on a linebacker in space like that. Second, less than a yard. Just outside the 48-yard line. Bats, cuts back, first down. Colt drags him down at the 49. He only needed a couple of feet, and he got about two and a half yards on the carry. Reggie Holt is such an outstanding player for this Wisconsin football team right now. He's going to disguise the coverage to begin with, but he comes up and fills the hole just at the snap. You're not going to see him. He's going to come from the left side. But as he picks up the first down, bats, here comes Holt filling in on that little off-tackle play, and that's what he does such a brilliant job of, is coming up in the secondary and making tackles. Reggie was second in the Big Ten in tackles last year, 144. First and ten. Lewis, the motion man, as Green wants to throw. The tight end, Ross Hales, to the 44-yard line. Ross Hales last week had a career game. Eight catches for 82 yards. And number 88, the junior out of Elkhart, Indiana, off to a good start today. One thing that Bill Mallory has to feel good about right now is Trent Green really looks to have his timing down early in this game. Gary Casper had him covered very well that time and Ross Hales made a little move but that ball was there before the round and you can't stop timing routes like that. Second and six. Indiana's moved it to the Wisconsin 44 yard line. The Hoosiers second offensive possession of the afternoon. Draw play this time to Bats. Tough run by Bats down near the 39 yard line. And some people would say who is Michael Bats? And Bill Mallory told us Here's a kid that was on the scout team, and he said, I can hear the pads popping down on the scout field. And I said, wait a minute, we need a little bit of that on the front line. <laughs> exactly. But you know what happens in this formation again right here, Brad? It's by putting Lewis out here and having three wide receivers, you get Wisconsin to reduce. Here's Norvell, their leading tackle. So in essence, you've blocked him before the play starts by just your formation. And the running play is just that much more room to run up front. So good advantage again of formation. Everybody in tight on a third and one. Bats behind Pinnock. And he follows his fullback first and then the left side of his line for a first down at the 36-yard line. So Bats with a good start today. Indiana in their three wins there at 192 and the three losses, 63 a game. Well, right, if let's not nibble around the target, let's just get right to the bullseye <laughs> right here because this is the main of the story. In Ross Perot's words, I mean, there's right on the bullseye right there in the story of the game. When IU can run the football, Trent Green can throw the football and they're a tough team to stop. 
Green is four for four, throwing the football. And he's going to throw it again on first down. Maybe. Nope, not this time. Mike Thompson, the big fella. A sophomore with the sack. And Green's not too excited about it. Well, Trent Green is upset because he had a touchdown pass to Thomas Lewis that time. He had him isolated on the strong safety. And this is the problem that Indiana and Trent Green has been having this year. They have not been able to go by anything but five-step drops. You'll see right there on the left side, Chris Smith, number 71, was not able to handle Thompson. And the deep downfield passes have not been there for Indiana this year. 260-pounder out of Portage, Wisconsin, who had a emergency appendectomy in the spring that slowed him down and he kind of ballooned up to about 280 and now he's in fighting shape as he showed on that sack they're trying to get to green again and they do again and this time it's gary castro who's come up with two tackles for loss already this afternoon this one way back at the 40 yard line well, Indiana has a drive going, but they've got it going for a second quarter drive. They've got it in reverse right here. It was a screen pass called. You're going to see they're going to try to screen to bats to the left side. Trent sees he does not have time. He has Shackerford right in his face. Then Casper comes in. Wisconsin already has started to come with four and five man blitzes. As you see, the two leading tackling men for this Wisconsin defense, Norvell and Casper, second and third of the Big Ten in tackles. Here's the situation you love to be in as a quarterback, right? Third yeah. down and 34. This is where you want to see if the draw play. A little defensive holding is always nice <laughs> Green with a lot of field in front. I don't know if it's 34 yards worth, though. Got out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Picked up 12. And Indiana will have to give it up. Good coverage, apparently, by Wisconsin in the secondary again. Very interesting. Wisconsin did not, again, drop into a zone. They played combination coverages in the defense. They double-teamed Thomas Lewis, and I think that's who uh, its quarterback, Trent Green, wanted to get the ball to, and he just didn't come off it. Shannon Rutledge to punt this time as Indiana uses two punters. Aaron Brown back for Wisconsin. Neither punter has exactly done wonders, but what a great roll. That must be what they bring in Shannon Rutledge for. They know his role is going to go inside the five. It's a shank and roll. <laughs> well, he got it done. It wasn't pretty. And Wisconsin in a hole when we come back. Boy, Drake got a little bit of pressure on the Wisconsin quarterback. Bochamp, you talk about him. Had they had him in this Indiana defense, you wonder how good they'd be here. Well, talking to Joe Novak, defensive oh, coordinator, he really points to him as the big guy that they're missing, not just as a player, but it creates a void in depth that affects everyone. You know, Mills is playing better. Whittington's playing great, doing a great job for the defense, but it's just one less guy to rotate in there, and everybody has to play a little longer, and they have to get tired. And they lost a senior, Larry McDaniel, to injury in the last week. Third down and eight, Wisconsin. Bevel in the flat. Jason Burns. And Jason went out of bounds and then tried to cut back to get the first down. That won't work. Got it to about the 13-yard line. That's it. It's fourth down. Really surprised they didn't go to Michael Rowan, their tight end. Every time they throw a pass to him, it's a first down. And on that play, he was open, too. So they were a little conservative and safe. You're going to see the tight end. He's going to bounce off the linebacker. And if Bevel would have just hung for him for one second in the middle of the field, there wow. he is wide open in space. So that would have been another first down. Sam Veit from his own end zone and Scott McGowan back deep for Indiana. Second straight three and out situation for Wisconsin. You get a little nervous as a putter when you're standing there. Line drive. McGowan took it on the fly at the 45 and got about three yards out of the return. 340 left first quarter. We're still scoreless. Indiana will have it in Badger territory when we come back. Indiana's 80th homecoming game. 33, 40, and 6 over those 80 homecoming games. The coaches stressing the importance of this one and the next series for the Indiana defense as the offense is on the field at the 42-yard line. First down. Best field position to start a drive on the day for Indiana. Flags down. Green with all day to throw. And again, 
apparently an excellent job in the secondary because he has to scramble for a couple yards. But again, two penalty markers down. Can't ask for more time than that as a quarterback, Gary. Yeah, but uh, he's not playing golf. He's trying to find somebody <laughs> to throw to on this one. And there was no one open downfield. I think they kept an extra back in, and that's really, they only had three people going off for a pass, and Wisconsin dropped in zones. Illegal formation, six men on the line, on the offense, five yards, repeat, first down. Well, they really stress that to the NCAA officials during the offseason because we've seen that call more made this year, I think, than ever before. First penalty of the game. We'll make it first and 15 for Indiana. Trent Green has a little bit of a delicate situation now with a young offensive line. He lost Andrew Green. They've lost a couple centers that they counted on, Rod Carey. You see how many young players are playing on this Indiana football team. And Bill Mallory said he's just going to have to play these people. They're better than the players that he had up above. Forget the red shirt. First and 15. Now at the 47. Here comes a blitz. And Bats ran right into part of that blitz. Casper came from the outside and Todd Orlando from the inside. And he does a little strength pose there after helping out on the tackle. <laughs> Got that whole Hulk Hogan thing happening. There. Yeah, well, you know, it's televised, and uh, <laughs> it's going back, and a lot of people are seeing it. Todd Orlando came off the wing that time. Wisconsin doing a good job, again, of disguising their coverages and keeping Trent Green aware of them moving around and not knowing exactly what the coverage is before the ball is snapped. Wisconsin with their nickel defense in, a three-wide receiver group for Trent Green on second and 15. <laughs> Blitz again, and Bats ran right into it again. This time it's from Jamal Brown, the strong safety. Boy, they're coming from the exact perfect spots for the Wisconsin defense. Yeah, you'll see it coming from the secondary. They're disguising it pretty good, but this guy right here looks like he's covering this man, but he's going to sneak right in here. Good job of the defensive end coming outside, and they run right into the blitz. A good call by the defensive secondary. Defensive coordinator and good execution by the people disguising before the snap and doing a blitz that runs right into a draw play. You look at Dan McCartney, the defensive coordinator for Wisconsin. Third and 16. And they keep it on the ground again. And Bats had some room this time. His flags go down. He runs in first to Melvin Tucker and then Corey Manley. He got about 11 yards, but a penalty marker down at the 45. Bats is saying, you know, it was easier than this on the scout team. Holding Indiana. It appeared to me that Clay Williams, number 78, the freshman, who had such a tough job with Chris Hutchinson last week against Michigan, is the guy who was holding on the inside end of the line that time. He's moving in and out with Chris Smith, who has that broken hand problem, and maybe Smith is not able to play up to the ability that they thought before the game. Just more of those injury problems. Trent was kind of amusing yesterday talking about uh, Clay, uh, Clay Williams blocking Chris Hutchinson. I mean, you line up the first game against Michigan, and you might have one of the best defensive linemen in the country playing against you. And he said Williams' eyes were his biggest soft in yeah, the huddle. He, he had to pat him like a little kid and say, you're all right, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Trent Green shows that leadership on the field, and Bill Mallory provides it on the sideline. The other thing Trent was talking about is working with new tailbacks by committee. And oh, yeah. I know you asked him about Michael Bass. He had kind of an interesting answer. Yeah, he says, I don't, sometimes I turn around and try to figure out where he is. You, know? <laughs> you never quite know, especially with a true freshman. It's third and 26. We've had third and 34s, and now a third and 26. Green with time. And we might have interference on that one. McGowan, the intended receiver, and Melvin Tucker was there too early. It was a good hit, but it was about a half second too soon. Well, Wisconsin is not dropping into the zones like they had been previous. They're running a lot of combo defensive coverages at the quarterback of Lewin. They're trying to double-team Thomas Lewis, the man in the slot. On the defense, first down at the spot of the foul. So instead of a punting situation, a first down at Indiana. Well, you can see he's getting an earful right now from McCartney, the defensive coordinator. And the reason is it was such long yardage. All he needed to do was make the tackle. Here's Thomas Lewis, their leading receiver. Look, it looks like zone, but they're going to play in and out coverage when Lewis comes off after the snap. Two guys have Lewis. That's where 
Trent would like to go with the ball. They're also double covering the receiver to the bottom of the field, the number two receiver on that time, but a little bit too aggressive, and they got a penalty. And it cost them the first down as we're down to the final 72 seconds of the first quarter. Still no score in Indiana at the Wisconsin 43-yard line. To the short side of the field, got about three. Michael Batts, as we said, one of the true freshmen playing and making his first start. Last week, 25 yards on eight carries. Yeah, his high school career, though, he was quite a running back. Over 2,000 yards and 27 touchdowns as a senior in Seymour, Indiana. Yeah, Bill Mallory told us, he said, you know, in an all-star game, the coaches that had him said, you're really going to like this kid. He runs hard every play, and he's going to grow on you, and evidently he has. Indiana has an illegal formation right now. And we've got a timeout for the Hoosiers. Trent Green will walk to the sideline. And with 108 left first quarter, we've got time to go back to Tim Brando in the studio. Tim? Brando. In his ninth season here in Bloomington, his 23rd year overall, and five of the last six seasons have been ended with a bowl game. That's what he's hoping for again this year. And here in the house in the last six years, they're pretty tough to beat. 24, 6, and 1. They had a nice string going before the Wolverines came to town last weekend. You get a full recap of this college football Coming up tonight on the red. Barry Alvarez doesn't give up 200 yards a game to anybody. His club comes in ranked 14th in the country and second in the Big Ten. They allow only 112 yards a game. The boys had a dramatic improvement over the first year he was in Wisconsin. Well, he had trouble running the ball and, and stopping them when they got there. So he's done an outstanding job of just turning everybody on the same page and playing tough football. Second down and eight in the final minute of the first quarter. And thinking about the blitz again. Green delivers this one a little too far in front of Lewis. And Scott Nelson, free safety, was covering. When we talked to defensive coordinator Dan McCarney before the game, what he had to do to throw the timing of the IU passing game, he said we have to put pressure on Trent Green. Our secondary isn't good enough to match up all day, so if we have to rush four guys and put pressure, we will. Five guys, we will. Six guys, we will. But no matter what, we have to throw the tempo and timing off of that man right there, Trent Green. Well, they've sacked him once today and hurried him several other times, and they already have as many sacks here in 92 as they had all of last season. Here's another third and long. Third and eight. Wisconsin comes with everybody again. And now it's sack number two. Well, actually, he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Trent goes down again. Michigan sacked him last week nine times. Trent was in for eight of them, so he's still busted up. But you're going to see Wisconsin again come with a seven-man blitz. That means the free safety is covering the tight end, who was probably hot in that situation. But Trent knew he had nowhere to throw the ball. The only thing he could do was try to get up there and make something out of nothing. And, you know, good job by Wisconsin. They seem to be... Take risk, taking the risk and willing to take the risk and sending men. It's our time, injury timeout. Well, he's shaking up. Might be Mike Thompson. Yeah, that would not be good news for uh, for Wisconsin. 34 seconds left in the quarter. We'll go to Tim Brando. Tim, Brad, something we're going to be talking about it. Battling the Huskies. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't like about the polls. Is that means you just run up the scores against inferior teams and you don't get some of the other kids playing in good quarter. This punt hammer toward the end zone and gets there. Touchback. Yeah, he didn't shake it enough that time. No, he didn't. <laughs> Jim DeGiulio not too happy with himself. So Wisconsin gets it back at the 20-yard line. We've had a lot of punts so far in the ball game. In fact, that's the fifth one. Wisconsin's defense, as we look at Mike Thompson right there, a really important player for this Wisconsin defense. Their front three is very dynamic and while stopping the run and putting pressure on. Wisconsin's defense has done a good job of keeping the Indiana offense and Trent Green off balance so far. Thompson's a guy that is not afraid to say, hey, I think we got the best front four in the, uh, the best front wall, I should say, defensively in the Big Ten. Now, I don't know how far he is off, but you like to have that kind of confidence in the big guy. 
Here's Brent Moss, who's been battling some injuries. Picked up about three. It'll be second down and seven, but that second and seven, no doubt, will have to wait until the second quarter. Urban McCormick in on the tackle as our first quarter winds to a close. Wisconsin has run six plays, and they have been maybe out to the 24, and that's about it. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you in the booth. Charlene Hawks on the sideline. Charlene? Brad, Trent Green no doubt is having flashbacks uh, to last week's game against Michigan when he was sacked seven times. He told me that last week it became more and more quiet in the huddle as the game went on. He used to yell at the guys for those kinds of errors, but he said as the season has progressed, he's become more like a dad, recognizing that these guys react differently to uh, being yelled at. And so now there are only a couple of guys he can yell at, and, they, and that will motivate them. The rest of the guys, he just needs to encourage them. He hopes the kinder, gentler approach will work better today. Brad? His counterpart, Darrell Bevel, zips one out for a first down. Jason Burns takes it on the fly, and Wisconsin has it at the 31-yard line. The game is fairly even, except for field position, I think, right now. The game is pretty even. Both defenses are playing very strong, have kept the offenses off balance. You know, Indiana has started an average on their own 38-yard line, and Wisconsin's average has been at their own 14. So I think if they get it up over the 40-yard line, they may go deep here quick in this game. Well, it's their first first down of the ball game. It comes in the second quarter. The 38 yard line, Brent Moss, Bernard Whittington in on the stop. The junior out of St. Louis. Joe Novak has told us how well Bernard Whittington is filling in for Charles Bochamp, and he's also impressed with Lamar Mills' play. He really feels that front four is doing a good job for them, funneling the ball into those linebackers where the Thurman and, and Miller. What they're really missing by not having Bochamp is that leadership. Now McDaniel's gone. Miller had not been playing. That's what Indiana's missing this year. Second down and three. The sprint draw. And a first down, and then some out to midfield. Jason Burns in the Indiana Territory. Pick up a 12. Watching Wisconsin, one of the things you're so impressed of is how good they are at getting a hat on people. Very simple office. You see the center right there, Corey Raymer. Get by the nose tackle and put his hat on someone. Mark Montgomery, the fullback, goes around the end and picks up the linebacker. And the running back is just running in space. And that's a very successful, well-coached football team right now. Indiana coaches said when you watch the offensive line of Wisconsin, they very seldom give. They're usually going forward. And this time they get forward for a couple of yards for Brent Moss, and that's about it. Three second down and eight. Again, Whittington uh, along with Troy Drake to the left side of the defensive front for the Hoosiers in on the tackle. I'll tell you, a couple players that are really standouts in my eye so far for Wisconsin has been Corey Raymer, the true freshman at center, and Joe Panis, number 58, to tackle. They are really playing physical football right now and kind of manhandling. Raymer right there in the center is the key, though. He has to be able to get out in one on one blocks. Second and eight. Doubles. Completes it to the 43 yard line. Mark Montgomery, the fullback, snuck out of the backfield. Still short of the first down, though. Mose Richardson got out there to make the stop. Offensive coordinator Brad Childress told us that Corey Raymer has unlimited potential as a center right there. Good feet, wide base. Boy, he's just mean, too, you know? <laughs> Likes to block people, played four games, started four games as a true freshman, and he's really the mainstay now in the offensive line. Sophomore out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Third down and three. All of Bevel's completions have been to running backs until now. Doremus, I don't think he got the first down. First time they've thrown to the guy that's their big play man, and he's about a yard short of a first down, thanks to Chris Dyer, who wrapped him up. Yeah, Lee Doremus, number two. Average 32 yards a catch in high school. He has got speed and he can make the acrobatic catch, but that time he only went out maybe a half a yard as they tried to sucker Indiana on the fake screen and just leave the Ramos in there to pick up the first down. Barry Alvarez knows full well that Bull Scouts are looking on and that his team hasn't won on the road left this year, and he's going for it on fourth and a yard. Wisconsin 86% on their fourth down conversions, and they've got another one. Down to the 36-yard line. That is the seventh time in eight tries they've been successful on fourth down this year. 
And that's really been the difference in this football team. Give the credit to the offensive line. When you used to watch Wisconsin play before in past five or six years, they have been getting manhandled up front, but no more. Their offensive line now has confidence, feel they can, they can move people off the line of scrimmage. You know, in the last two years, they were not able to average over 100 yards rushing per game, and now they're up in 100, over 100 yards a game. Number two in the Big Ten in rushing. Here comes an Indiana blitz on play action. Deep for Doremus, and he trips at the five-yard line. Chris Dyer back there in coverage, number 16. Chris Dyer a year ago was a quarterback, and now he's in the secondary, and he, he got a little baptism last week trying to tackle Jerome, Tyrone Wheatley for Forget Michigan. It, huh? <laughs> he didn't come within five yards, but there's not many safeties that can right there, but he did a good job, played smart football back there. He did a good job smelling that deep pass for Wisconsin that time. Well, David Watts thought he had an angle on Wheatley on this <laughs> touchdown, right? Yeah. Again, on a quick snap. Moss kept his balance, put a hand down, and got to the 30-yard line. Lamar Mills finally finished him off after John Miller put a hit on it, and it will bring up another third down situation, third and about four. John Miller, they really needed him all season long, and finally he's almost helping. Yeah, he, he was kind of limping around yesterday and saying that he was 100%, and one of the guys <laughs> said, that's just how he walked. <laughs> John, a senior, out of, out of a football powerhouse in Ohio. Moss. Back, and he's got it to the 21-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, if he hadn't run into his own man that time, he'd have gone all the way. And he missed a blitz by about 12 inches, too. I think he ran right That's, by he that. He ran right by a blitz. They thought it was going to be a pass right here. Going off the right slant play. Look how good Wisconsin does at getting a hat on everyone. Runs by a safety. I don't know who he runs into. I think it's Roan that time coming from the backside, the tight end. But he was going to sprint into the end zone had he not bumped into him. Deepest penetration of the day for Wisconsin. Jason Burns, and he spins his way down to the 13-yard line. Chris Dyer went low to finally stop him. Burns and Moss have been alternating at that tailback spot. And remember, they have their leading uh, returning rusher not playing in this game, Terrell Fletcher. Burns and Moss are different. Right here, what Burns gives you, a little more quickness. He's a jitterbug guy. He spins off one that time off Watts' tackle and gets into the secondary. Moss is the guy that's just going to hammer you and keep pushing through the line of scrimmage. Wisconsin, you saw what they've done inside the 20. And they've got second and four. Bevel just barely gets a hand off to Burns, who keeps his footing. And he's got it close to a first down. Jay Davis made the tackle, and we'll go to Tim Brando. Alabama established themselves. Oh, Alabama's unbeaten, and now the fans are complaining their offense didn't score enough. <laughs> Third down of the yard on the 14th play of the Wisconsin drive. Burns got the first. And it's going to be first and 10 because he's still not quite to the 10-yard line. John Hammerstein made the tackle. Burns has been struggling with some injuries, and Barry Alvarez is having just about as much trouble keeping his tailbacks healthy out there. Burns has an abdominal pull he's playing with, and Brent Moss has had the groin problem all, all week long. So those guys are not quite 100%, but they haven't shown it here today. Oh, we're going to take a look at this. I said they were short. Maybe they're not. No, they I, thought you, I thought you said they had. You were right. You were right. Just, just have confidence in those calls. You That's right. Good eyes. I didn't think he got a very good spot that time. I thought he was near the line, and they, they pulled it back. So now you're at the tough situation here. You know, you can get a first down, but it's going to be so close to the touchdown. This is tough. A 10 tough yards that they have to pick up. Already gone 71 yards. Moss, only the 10. That's it. John Miller. Al Thurman, the two inside linebackers, uh, the inside linebacker and outside linebacker, I should say, combined on the hit. Well, I think Joe Novak, defensive coordinator for IU, will be looking for some kind of a play action pass right now, and I'm sure he's going to get it. You're going to see Wisconsin and Bevel try to come outside the pocket and maybe hit a crossing tight end or a receiver. Have they thrown to their tight end yet? The guy that's always getting first down for him. Here's a track play. That got him to the five-yard line. Their fullback, Mark Montgomery, still will bring up third down and four. 
We were very impressed with Montgomery's play against Ohio State, a true top blocker. And at the end of the game, when everybody started to wear down, he really picked up some big yards and first downs for Wisconsin. Obviously, the biggest third down situation of the ball game so far. Scoreless with 7.56 remaining first half. The Badgers have it third and four at the Hoosiers' five. Moss inside handoff. Now that was Mark Montgomery, the fullback. And he got it to the three. That's it. Here comes the field goal unit. Yeah, those, those are just tough plays to pick up 10 yards down there inside the 10-yard line. No matter how much you're manhandling a team, now those the secondary people move up an extra four or five yards, and they're in on all those tackles. And, well, I, I wonder if a, a play-action pass would have been, uh, you know, got you into the end zone. Here's one of the hottest kickers in college football, Rich Thompson, who won the game last week for Wisconsin over Purdue. This should be a chip shot, 20-yarder. No good. Forget chip shots. I think you got to credit Mike Middleton right there, number 13. There's no doubt that he saw him coming out of the corner of his eye, and he just did not follow through. Rich Thompson, a hero last week, and though it's still early, he hesitates just a little bit and pushes it right. Still scoreless with 7.08 left first half. It's up, and it's down. So when you're shopping for a rental car, Call 1-800-FOR-CARS and rent a full-size four-door like the new Chrysler Concorde, just $34.95 a day. Because no matter how much money you make... It is, after all, your money. That's why I always rent from Thrifty. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by Saab, who invites you to see the new 9000 CS at your local Saab dealer. And by Thrifty Car Rental. For worldwide reservations, call 1-800-4-CARS. Indiana will work from the 20-yard line after the missed field goal by Thompson. And Bass fights and backpedals for a couple of yards. Mike Thompson, number 66, on the bottom of the pile. Here's the hottest kicker maybe in college football the exception of scott sisson and he blows a 20 yarder gary yeah and it just shows you what timing is involved in a kick right here it looked like he was a little bit off balance the whole way watch how he starts and then restarts again don't know if he was really ready for that snap that time and his rhythm was all off and then he saw middleton and, you know it was botched let's face it and i think the timing involved at the beginning of the kick is really what caused it second down and nine Still scoreless, Indiana from the 21-yard line. Trent Green throws outside. Lewis makes a catch at the 27. Still short of the first down, however. Well, that was an excellent throw by Trent Green that time. I mean, they have their receivers covered in the secondary. Messenger that time did a good job of clamping on Lewis. Indiana needs to go down the field deep. They need to air out a couple deep balls to get that zone backed up. Indiana's had good field position today, but all their possessions have ended in punts. And they'll have to punt again if they don't pick up three yards here on third down. Now in the past, when you had a Vaughn Dunbar, it was run or pass. Here, you've got a question if they can run for three yards. And Green can't run for it either. Dropped by Chad Yoakum. And you can see the lack of confidence in the play calling for Indiana. I mean, that was a third-yard situation where before you would you would predict that Vaughn Dunbar would get that ball. Now, I think they had a little bit of a busted route. They tried to go to Hales, the tight end, and it was just clamped. There's just not enough space right there to throw the football, and they need to go down the field and throw the ball. The Julio to punt again, and Aaron Brown back for Wisconsin. the Julio with an end-over-end end job that Brown fields at the 26. Flags down. We'll have no doubt an illegal block or two on what would have been an eight-yard return. Well, that's kind of funny because J.C. Dawkins, number one, clipped from the back, and he put his hands up like he didn't touch him. But when you have about 40,000 people going, oh, like that, he gets those late flags. Mike Middleton down for Indiana. 
And that would be a major blow to the Hoosier secondary. And I, and I think that's the guy who got clipped on the play. I, I'm not sure, but that was early in the play that that clip happened on. And, well, that's going to be a tough field position type penalty right now because it's going to back them up inside the 20 and it limits your plays. On the return, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. 4.51 left. Block real impressed with his play football ability. So far, I think the story in this football game to this point has been the mixing up of the coverages by Wisconsin and the domination of the, by the offensive line for Wisconsin against kind of an undersized defensive line for Indiana. Indiana likes to move a lot of guys around, but they're just coming off very simple and putting hats on people and pushing. Bill Ballard puts in about 12 miles on that sideline during the game. Second and eight, Wisconsin. From its own 41-yard line, blitz coming. Off broke one tackle and got to the 44. Still going to bring up a third down and four. That's what Miller in on the tackle. That's what Brad Childress and Barry Alvarez love about Moss. Even when he gets hit, he's always falling forward and picking up that extra yard, yard and a half. And if he carried the ball 20 times, that's an extra 35 yards of rushing at the end of the game, and it really adds up and makes a difference. Third down at five, Wisconsin. The Ramos in motion as Bevel wants to throw on the run. For the 47-yard line incomplete, it was Michael Roan. He had the right guy, he just didn't hold on to it. But I think he might have dropped that because he didn't sure he had the first down. <laughs> Every catch he's had this year has been for a first down. You're going to see he's going to let the Ramos clear, and then he's just going to try to find some open field. He backs up against the flow. It's a good throw right in there, but he drops it. 11 catches on the season, all for first downs. He would have had another one there, but didn't hold it, so Sam Blank will kick it away. Scott McGowan back for Indiana. Job by Mike to field that one and got away a great kick too. Best punt of the day in a punt filled first half. Dropped down to the seven yard line. A 49 yarder for Sam Vite with 2.52 left first half. No score with under three minutes left second quarter. The difference in the ball game, Wisconsin with an impressive drive that went 17 plays. And they thought they had a sure three from Rich Thompson. But his field goal went that away. So Indiana. Trent Green either on a broken play or an option. I don't know which. Out to the 11-yard line. Yeah, it was an option play. And they're just trying to get that running game going. They have not been able to move this front seven. That's one of those times I would bet Trent Green would have had maybe a guy with more experience would have been closer to him on the play fake. That didn't fake anybody out on that option. His bats was about two yards away from him. Wisconsin out rushing the Hoosiers. And as we said, a 17 play drive that netted them absolutely nothing. Trent's been on the turf four times thanks to the Wisconsin Badger defense. Second down and six. Bats open in the flat. He got tagged pretty good by Aaron Norvell at the 14-yard line. That's what you really admire about this Wisconsin defense. When they're hitting people, they are not even falling forward, and they're getting good pursuit. See, as Norvell goes back, even on a short pass, they're pinning the man in and knocking him backwards. Indiana is not getting any extra yards after the first hit. 159 left in our first half. We'll be right back. The IU Student Foundation and Student Alumni Council this Magnavox portable CD. Trent Green's found a little trouble trying to throw the football. Only 104 yards against Northwestern and only 83 last week against Michigan. He faces third and three here against the Wisconsin defense that isn't giving him much either. And he one hopped it to his intended receiver. Thomas Lewis out there. Green now 7 out of 10 for only 37 yards. Yeah, and for Indiana's offense all first half, they've only put 52 yards on the board. And, you know, that's just not good news, especially the way they're running the ball. Kind of surprised 
Wisconsin took a timeout on an incomplete pass right there. The clock was already stopped. And I think Barry Alvarez is telling Corey Manley that very thing. There goes the timeout wasted. Barry, don't break your glasses. We'll be right back. To Julio from the one yard line. He had a punt block for a touchdown against the Badgers last year. They might be bringing some heat on him here. They got close. And boy, did he respond. What a kick! End zone to end zone. He just won the punt pass and kick off. 86 yard kick. And when you've got a game that's got eight punts and one missed field goal, we may have to use that for a halftime highlight. <laughs> That thing almost got blocked, you know. He aired that That's baby out. Had a little air behind him, but well, it's reality though. He's standing on the one yard line. He pumps it from the five. That's a 95 <laughs> yard kick. The way I look at it. <laughs> that a boy, Jim. That'll up your average a little bit. He already came in almost 45 a punt. And that takes Wisconsin out of their two-minute offense right here because they can't afford a turnover. If anything happens, they're gonna have to make it happen down the field. <laughs> that was some kind of kick. Tied a school record with that boot. Intercepted, but a flag down. Damon Watts has the football. And let's see if there was interference before he got to the ball. Right, this is going to be one of those tough calls right here. Who's going for the ball, and who stopped, and who really anticipated the point of the ball? Well, you know what he said, and you can't repeat it. That's right. <laughs> he said, that's turn. not fair. On the defense, <laughs> first down. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot right here. You see him stop for the ball, and Watson oh, comes boy. in. I think that's good defense, I and too. I think that's an interception. And Wisconsin's very, very fortunate. That was a bad call. Or in Bill Mallory's words, that was not, not fair. fair. <laughs> <laughs> First down, Wisconsin. And they're going to go to the running game after that one. Trying to get to the corner, and he's not going to get there. Jason Burns, thanks to Moe Richardson. You know, after last year, when Bill Mallory wasn't even at the Wisconsin game because he was suspended with officials uh, against that Michigan game prior to, they were down 17-0 at the half and 40-0 at one point. Right now, IU looks up and says, we got the lead. Aaron Brown dropped it and then got dropped. Well, it's amazing that the IU offense or defense couldn't get this crowd going, but the official seems to have done it for them. And that's picked up the defense to another level, too, as Middleton and Jay Davis just said hello to Aaron Brown. Now it's third down at 14, Wisconsin, with 110 left. Indiana has two timeouts left, so they're really going to get the ball back in decent field position. That can come back and end up costing Wisconsin. That long punt is going to turn out to be a big play. Darrell Bevel's got to be careful now. Three wide receivers, and that's how careful they'll be. They give it off to Burns. Only to the 33-yard line, that's it. And Lance Brown made the tackle. Well, so far, our player of the game is the back judge, one of the officials, because he's really turned this game around. He the long punt by DeGiulio. Strategy turns to offense for Indiana with 102 left. Damon Watts hopping around in that defensive pile there. The guy that thought he had an interception and so did we, quite frankly. We're 69 seconds from halftime, and at halftime, Tim and the gang will have scores and highlights of the other games. Miami was having an easy time the last time we checked with Virginia Tech and the SEC Ole Miss in Alabama and in the ACC Clemson and the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. That and all the rest of what you need to know on this college football Saturday coming up in a minute and two seconds. Wisconsin is punting into the wind here on this play right here. So I really predict that Indiana is going to try to get a return because Trent Green is very good in the two-minute offense, and I think they're going to try to get a return on this play rather than go for the block. Sam Vine in the punt. Scott McGowan, number one, back at his own 25-yard line. 
minutes of time remaining, first half. Well, they got close to right. That one just dropped dead at about the 43-yard line. That's not that far for Indiana to try to move before intermission. 53 seconds left, only a 23-yard kick. With the wind at its back, he probably needs to get that ball down to about the 30-yard line, the 35-yard line to have a good shot at a field goal. But Trent Green right now with over a minute to go in this, well, 53 seconds to go in the half, excuse me, really has his eyes on the end zone right now. Brett Law has checked in at tailback for Indiana. They go with a three-wide receiver offense. They've yet to throw to Eric Matthews, who they told us they would try to get the ball to more today, too. it into Wisconsin territory at the 48-yard line. Carlos Fowler brought him down. Clock running down to 40 seconds. He had Thomas Lewis coming open, but Trent's just not confident in his protection up front. He's not staying with the play. He just has to have, be patient with it. It'll be there. On a second and two. Throws the slant in. Got it. Complete. Eddie Beatty. Eddie Beatty. Eddie Beatty got a first down. Beatty had the big game against Ohio State in the upset of the Buckeyes. And he found a spot to corral that one at the 37 yard line. Let's see if they can get Thomas Lewis down the middle of the football field. Lewis is the slot man right there to the bottom of your screen. Green goes to the left side. Out to Beatty again. He tiptoes out of bounds at the 32 with 18 seconds left. And we've talked a lot about Rich Thompson being a hot kicker. Scott Bunnell is not too bad either for Indiana. His longest of the year is 46 yards, so they're going to have to get a little bit more or ask him to kick one from deeper than he has all season long. Well, I feel that Indiana's in field goal position, but, you know, from this distance, it's a tough kick. He has the distance, but the accuracy from this level is tough. Does have the wind at his back if it comes to that. Second and five. Green with pressure from Thompson. Threw it over the head of his tight end. Incomplete pass. Well, Mike Thompson came flying in there. Trent Green had to throw over and around him. And it is third and five. Right. For all you people that watch pro football, that would be in the grasp in the pro game. But in college, Trent still had the ability to stand up there and deliver a pass. So an incomplete pass. That was George Blue, the offensive coordinator, you got to look at calling the play in on third down and five. Let's see what they come up with. If they don't get anything, it's going to be about a 49-yard field goal attempt. 13 seconds left, second quarter here in Bloomington. No score so far. Green going deep for Lewis. Too deep. Incomplete pass. And there's six seconds left. And now they will ask Scott Bunnell to hit one from deeper than he has all season long. But his career long, as you see, he's in that range. This guy is only five points behind Pete Stoyanovich as the leading kick scorer for uh, Indiana. 44 career field goals. Stoyanovich now an all-pro with the Dolphins at 47 in his career. They'll put this one down and we'll call it a 49-yard attempt. On the way. And no good. His tail to the left, Thompson missed earlier from the right side. And in a game of feet, punts and kicks in this case. We still don't have a score with one second left. In a game of feet, they both missed by a foot. That's this. right. Halftime is one tick of the clock away. Tim and Lee and Craig will be along. Scores and highlights of those games and all the rest of college football on this last, the last weekend of October, college football, no, we got one left, don't we? Halloween night. Next, next week we put our masks on into the game, don't we? There's the final snap of the half. Cannon goes off, they haven't had a chance to use it till now. Nobody scored. At the end of the first half, in Indiana's homecoming, key game for these two teams. Defense is playing well, that's about all you can say. Scoreless as we end the second quarter.
at halftime here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. What are the highlights of this game, you think? Well, it's not three yards in a cloud of dust because there's <laughs> turf here for the Big Ten game. But, uh, you know, I think we got to go with the highlight of the half, and that's a punt because that's all we saw in the first half is punts, and we had a great one. Let us show you here. This is right Jim here. Jim DiGiulio. He starts at his one-yard line. I should telestrate this thing. He kicks it at his six. <laughs> now, he did have a little wind behind him, I have to admit, but this thing is flying, and when it bounces, perfectly hit. So it rolls into the end zone. Of course, we have our tongue firmly implanted in our right. cheek. We've got a lot of people that are playing hard getting in this game to try to get into a bowl game. But right now, I think the only guy that's been happy with this first half in the stands has been Bobby Knight if he's watching it because it's been nothing but defense. Even Bob Knight, I don't think, could get a three-pointer out of this one so far. We've had a couple of field goals missed scoreless. Tough defense, though, by both teams. Wisconsin just not giving Indiana anything on the ground, and we talked about that at that's, the beginning of the game. That's really been the story. Indiana last year in this game, Vaughn Dunbar rushed for 205 yards. So far in this game, Indiana has 22 yards rushing. Uh, 19 carries. So they're getting about a yard a pop. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, mix into that, obviously, some sacks, but overall, they have not even moved back Wisconsin's defense an inch with the running game, and that's going to be a big problem for Trent Green. A half to go. The survivor of this one may have an inside track at a bowl game. That's the way it appears in the standings coming into this one. Michael London back deep for Wisconsin has it. Tear him off the four on his jersey, and he just barely got on top of it at the 12-yard line. That would have been a disaster to start the second half. The first half, as we take a look at our halftime statistics, and there is not a lot to show. 88 rushing yards for Wisconsin. And again, as Gary said, that 22 figures in sacks, but that'll still go in the, uh, the books as about a yard a carry for Indiana so far. The rushing defense of Barry Alvarez tough on everybody this year. Now he's hoping his rushing offense can come to life in the second half for the 12 yard line. Well, not much to start with. Yeah, well, there was a bust right there. We talked about how, uh, how good a job the offensive line does for Wisconsin. That time they just turned Lamar Mills free at the end of the line. I think it was the tight end Roan who didn't turn out from the bottom of your screen. You're going to see Mills come. No one even touches him and you know, as you said, Alan Amici couldn't gain yards on that run. Second down and nine. Play action for Bevel. First down. No, no get down. Uh -huh. And he had an opportunity, Aaron Brown did that time, to catch that ball from going to drag both of his feet, but he just took one too many steps. And it brings up a third down at nine, Wisconsin. Bevel comes up into the pocket, delivers a nice pass, and if Brown would have just dragged both feet right there, he'd have had a play, but just didn't do the proper technique. Well, they're doing a lot better than they did a week ago. Their third down conversion. Third and nine. Bevel with plenty of time. He dumped it over the middle, intended for Roan. Al Thurman was there. That one wouldn't have gotten a first down had he completed it. Well, you can't blame the protection this time for Bevel. He had good time to throw the football. But again, they're only sending out three people. You see the tight end tries to delay down. That's who he's trying to get this ball to to pick up the first down. But I think it was Herman McCormick, number 93, that ended up tacking backing that ball down in the short pass. So again, a putter in the spotlight from his own end zone. And McGowan back for Indiana. Sam Bite, second time he's been in his own end zone to punt. End over end, McGowan on the fly at the 47, got to about the 44, and a penalty marker in on the end of the play. Ben Zulo made the tackle on the special team. Yeah, I think even Ben Zulo was getting held on that play at the time he made the tackle. So that will take Indiana out of Wisconsin territory. First down. Well, they back it up to the 40. 
five. And that's where it'll be first down for Indiana. So again, great field position for the Hoosiers. <laughs> NFL game five time. We'll have all the highlights and scores from a day in the NFL. Chris Berman of the game tomorrow right here at ESPN. Starting at the 45-yard line. And going down at the 44-yard line is Bat. Yeah, Lewis Pinna, that was an isolation play on the linebacker, and Casper just missed the block from the fullback. You're going to see Casper on the right side right here. He's going to come up and fill the play, and Pinnock is going to just miss him clean coming into the hole right here. You're going to see the fullback come up clear, dodges him to the inside, gives him a little ole block, and that's how you gain no yards running the ball. Second and ten. coming on green. Oh, what a grab that was. Eddie Beatty stuck out his left hand and the ball stayed there. Yeah, Joe Ulro, Ulro from the, Beatty. is that how you say it? First baseman from Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he had a first baseman's mitt on that time because he just sticks out the paw and grabs it one hand. And this was not easily thrown right here. Woo! What a catch. And he gets hit and he's bringing it in, too. Well, Alrud wears a, a helmet, too, when he's playing the field. It's good to think that Eddie had one on. But... Sophomore out of Decatur, Georgia. Ed Beatty doesn't have the great speed, but you can see right there, he can catch the ball and make first down. His third of the day. Third down and three. And again, they'll try to throw for it. The out is too far out for Thomas Lewis. Reggie Holt did a nice job that time getting underneath that out, and that really caused Trent Green to lead the man a little bit more than he wanted, because believe me, he saw Reggie Holt coming underneath that out and did a good job. You just can't keep getting field position like your own 45 and having a punt, though. Yeah, if you, you, you can turn it into any sport. It's like baseball having runnings on base all day and not being able to knock them in. It catches up with you after a while. Scott Nelson back for Wisconsin. The Julio to punt. Piece of this one too. Going to carry to the end zone, and it'll be Wisconsin at their own 20-yard line when we come back. 12:26 to go, third quarter. We're still scoreless here in Bloomington. They won't get the three. Maybe a yard. That's about it. Right, it's 67, 68, and I just wanted to tell Lee Corso that the tickets he got for this guy, <laughs> <laughs> he got him, he wanted to let you know, thanks a lot, coach. 68, he got him in the last row. Yeah, Coach Corso got some pretty good ducats, and some people remember it. Boy, I tell you, that'll make me go out and vote right there. <laughs> Third down at two. And again, they don't get two. Al Thurman and Chris Dyer stop Jason Burns. Punting situation again. We may set a Big Ten record for number of punts before this one's over. Sam Bight and Jim DiGiulio will spend most of tomorrow in the Whirlpool when this game's over. This will be the sixth one for Bight. And Scotty McGowan back deep for Indiana. Another good kick. Fair catch. Double pumped at the 33-yard line by McGowan. Ten minutes and 43 seconds remaining third quarter. And again, Indiana with pretty good field position when we come back. You know, I've messed up on a few relationships in my life, but there's one that's lasted over 35 years with a lot of help from Quaker State. It's tough on wear, tough on sludge. So Quaker State and I are planning on a meaningful relationship with my new car. So why don't you do the same with your new car's engine and Quaker State will guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. You think if I gave Lonnie the Quaker State deal, she'd give me the same guarantee? <laughs> Quaker State is one tough motor oil. If life didn't change so often, you wouldn't need a permanent phone number. Introducing AT&T Easy Reach 700 service, so the people you care about most can always reach you. 
Call toll-free today for your AT&T Easy Reach 700 number. Life changes. Your phone number doesn't have to. September 1957. Road and track on the Volvo 444. With a car like this, who needs a sports car? October 1992. Uh, excuse me, ma'am? Come on, we have a close game. You know, that's why I don't like to eat at halftime. You can see she had a couple dogs there, and that just puts you right out. We're scoreless at 10.43 to go third quarter. Brent Green, the slant. Got it across the 45 to midfield, and then some. And that'll wake that lady up. 21 yards to McGowan. First down, Indiana. First big pass play, really, of the day. There we go. Hey, all right. <laughs> it's amazing what a little noise and a forward pass will do. You can see McGowan coming from the top of your screen. He's going to run a little bit of a delay route out here. Delay, 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 and then follow in behind after the man clears here. Delay, delay, delay after he clears, and Trent Green puts it in there. And McGowan's so good at just weaving away from the hits right there. Longest play of the day. 21 yards. Green to McGowan. First down to the 47. And now a broken play. Yeah, maybe a broken shoulder, too. Trent Green and his center, Josh DeWitt. I think the only two guys that had the snap count. Well, maybe Trent didn't want it on that one either. That's right. It was on two. And I tell you, I think he got hit right on the shoulder there, too. And that's his right shoulder. That's when you have it on two and the center snaps it on one. Unfortunately, the quarterback ends up with the ball and no blocking. Aaron Norvell put a shot on him, too. That's where you just as soon give it back on a center Ruski, wouldn't you? Yeah. Here, you keep it. Playground, you can do that. Unfortunately, out here, you got it. Second and eight. Indiana back in Wisconsin territory. They had spent much of the first quarter there and had nothing to show for it. Little hitch intended for Beatty, incomplete. Jeff Messenger out there covering. Wisconsin came with a seven-man blitz that time, and Trent just didn't stay with the play long enough. You wonder if he couldn't see this and check off because he definitely had a tip that that was going to go deep on that play, and the hitch was a tough throw, and he could feel that corner coming up on the play. You know, Gary, I think you're right from the previous play. He still seems to be trying to move that shoulder a little bit like that still bothers yeah. Backup quarterback, John Pacey. Third down and eight. Two tight ends set for Indiana. Green leveled from behind as he let go of the ball. They just have not been able to stand up to that seven-man rush. When you show on film, and has Trent Green coming off again, holding that right arm. That time Dwight Reese got it from behind. And Believe me, when you show on film, and that's court, every quarterback's fear that you can't handle the blitz, you know you're going to see it for the next few weeks because Michigan showed a vulnerability in that line, and Wisconsin just is coming after him. Indiana missed its last seven third down conversions now. They're forced to give it up again. Oh, the Julio got all of this one, too. And Julio's not used to having them so close to the goal. Line. 45 yard punt, but it'll come out to the 20s. They're going to work on Trent Green's shoulder on the sideline. Some of the other scores games going on around the country today. Here we're scoreless with 9.21 to go in the third quarter of this Saturday afternoon encounter. Wisconsin has it back at the 20. Play action. Intended for Montgomery out the flat. And he couldn't hold on to it. We've got Thursday night football again coming up for you this week. Exclusive coverage of Thursday night CFA this week. To kick off your weekend, the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi travel to Greenville, North Carolina to take on East Carolina's Pirates. Michael Anderson, their exciting quarterback. 7.45 Thursday night on ESPN. Second and 10 from the 20, and there was contact made there. Hammerstein came across the line. And drew an offside call. It'll be a free five yards for Wisconsin. 
Dead ball. Dead ball. Encroachment was kind of has shown that they have the ability out. to run the ball effectively, but they haven't proved that they can throw the ball effectively in this football game. And it's been the opposite for Indiana. That's why both teams have really been able to not get off the mark here. Nice cut back, but he lost his footing. Brent Moss. Lamar Mills helped make sure he wasn't going any further as Trent Green continues to work on that throwing arm. And remember, that play happened on that snap play on the quarterback's yep. feet, not on the sack. He's got his chin all bandaged up, too. As Bill Mallory told us after the Michigan game in nine sacks, he said he came in, he looked like somebody cut him up with a meat cleaver. Yeah, but I, you know, I would like that. I, I used to put the black stuff on my eyes just because I was so scared all the time. <laughs> I didn't want to see him. You know, I didn't want to look tough. Third down and two. Possible blitz. Here it comes. Bevel has it knocked down. Bernard Whittington slaps that one back. And Indiana's defense answers the call again. Whittington is going to come off from the top. In man on the line of scrimmage. This is him right here. Now remember, uh, Bevel's just going to take a short drop, and the tackle's giving too much ground here. He needs to attack at the end of the line of scrimmage. When he gives so much ground, that allows... Bevel to have Whittington right in his face, and you can easily also say it was kind of a busted assignment because they let Whittington come clean. 235 pounds, not the biggest, and that's 20 pounds heavier than he was about a year ago. And for the second time today, Mike Middleton. Now you have to assume that he's cramping up yeah. a little bit. Working on the right cap of Middleton, who's had some problems earlier in the ball game. With the injury, we'll go back to Tim Brando. Tim. Kansas and Oklahoma, Brad, it's a big one for the Jayhawk program. Chip Hillary, who's had an outstanding year with a little dump pass to Dwayne Chandler to get a 7-0 lead. But Cale Gundy comes right back for the Sooners. He'll look for Corey Warren running the post pattern. That tied it at 7. The Jayhawks have since kicked a field goal and lead by 3. Middleton hasn't moved much. 8.36 left third quarter. No score. Brad Nessler, Gary Daniels, and Charlene Hawks with you from Bloomington. And while we have a moment, let's get on to Charlene Hawks. Charlene? Brad, the injury bug won't leave Indiana alone. I talked with uh, head trainer Kip Smith, and he said that Herbert McCormick looks doubtful for the rest of the game. He has a slight, mild separation, an AC sprain in his right shoulder, similar to what uh, Wisconsin's Lionel Crawford is out for. Again, he looks doubtful. They are icing him down, and we'll see what kind of motion he has, though. Brad? All right. Thank you, Charlene. And finally, Mike Middleton's going to work his way to the sideline. This will be the seventh Wisconsin punt. Each team has kicked it seven times to the other. Indiana will have it back on offense. What do they have to do, Gary, to get this thing going? Well, you know, one of the ideas that they might use is maybe a little no huddle and try to keep Wisconsin, uh, you know, their, their uh, nickel package off the field and kind of jumpstart their offense. Pete, let Trent get up the line of scrimmage, call some plays from the line of scrimmage, and see if they go almost into a two-minute mode, see if they can get some momentum going, some enthusiasm going on offense. Maybe Scott McGowan will give them a kickstart on a punt return. Let's see what happens at the end of this one. Great coverage. Vince Zula down there again, the backup tight end. That's the second time he's made a stop on punt coverage. 8.28 left third quarter. No score here, and we'll probably have a score on ESPN Snap. Lewis had already made an attempt at that one. I tell you, this is one throw that uh, Trent Green would like to have over right here. He kind of crossed Lewis over, meaning that he was on a post route and threw it behind him upfield. If he'd have led him across the field, he might have had a big play. I'm going to see the tail end of this play right here. Lewis is about on the 40-yard line. If he'd have led him across the field, he'd have had him. But watch how he has to bend back for that play. The messenger was very fortunate on that time. Second and 10, Indiana. From its own 37-yard line. Bats off to the races. He's no longer a true freshman after that run. 48 yards. Your chance for was very well. 
We got her away, right. but I'm, she must be a Wisconsin fan. You can't please some people. <laughs> is very upset on this play. Let me show you why. Number 61, McKinnon, is going to tackle him there. Here's Casper right here, and I believe it's this man is going to get his hand on him and hold him on the play. Casper's going to come around. No, it's the tackle right there. Now watch him grab him as he tries to get off from the backside, and that's really what sprung the play, but give credit to Bats. I mean, he can't block it and run it. He just read the, the daylight and spread it out there, and boy, is that a welcome relief for the IU people. All the way to the 15-yard line. Biggest play of the day and the deepest penetration for Indiana. On a counter, it's Bats again. He got about six. Number 44 again, Jerry. Scott Nelson from the secondary helped on the tackle. One more look at it from a different angle. You're going to see Casper in the middle of your screen, and McKinnon's going to come from the left side. Watch, he locks on right here, and with his right hand, he's going to yank Casper down, and that's why Casper couldn't get free to make that play. And that's really a classic holding on a running play. Now it's second and four, Indiana, at the Wisconsin nine-yard line. Still scoreless here with seven and a half minutes to go, third quarter. the traffic and the traffic doesn't stop number 44 carrying michael bass reggie holt carlos fowler scott nelson in on the hit well two weeks ago michael bass as we mentioned before was a scout team quarterback i mean he was playing the, the running back who would be featured in that game giving a look for the defense and was really fifth string he had sean glover emmett pride cheney and brent law in front of him so just goes to show you hard work pays off and now he's in a position to make a statement here and take over the job. 75 rushing yards in the game. Bill Mallory says he's just a punt, but he's got a little rope to it. <laughs> Third and four. Green to Lewis. In and out of his hand. Messenger again. Messenger got picked on last week by Purdue, and he's answered the call today pretty well. Well, Dan McCartney said, yes, that was true. They picked on him, and he did get beat for a touchdown, but a lot of it was underneath coverage. You're going to see Indiana run a fade route against coverage that's not bump and run. Very unusual, but Methner does a good job of looking when Lewis looked. When Lewis put his hands up to catch the ball, that's when Messenger turned around to look for the ball. He really made the play at the end of it right there. Good save, and he could save four points for him. Von Ells perfect from this distance. This is a 21-yard attempt. Finally, we've got a score. We've been waiting for that cannon all day long. Well, I'll tell you, they got plenty of ammo left. <laughs> 6.35 remaining third quarter. we got plenty of time left, but finally, we've got a field goal. Some this was a 26-yard field goal that was good by Bunnell, wasn't it? Right, it's, it's a good thing it wasn't a 27-yard field goal <laughs> because this thing was hooking all the way by Bunnell. You're going to see it from this angle right here, and obviously we're not underneath the goalpost, but you can see that thing moving to the right, and it's very close right over the top of the post right there. You can see the ball right here at the top of your screen, the post coming right up at the same angle. Oh, nice post, Gary. <laughs> I'm a little nervous on this play. <laughs> From the other angle, it almost looked worse. But anyway, it's good for three. I know Bunnell was really using the body language there because he was just twisting and hoping that that thing would sneak in. He looked like a surfer down there hanging 10 <laughs> just to get that thing in. And finally, we've got a score with 6.35 remaining in the third quarter. Well, the reason we use the Telestrator is when you score, you know, you have to. you got to use it. Yeah. <laughs> we pay for this thing, and we have to use it. <laughs> Michael London had a hard time handling the opening kickoff to start the third quarter and ended up at only the 12-yard line. Let's see how he does with this one. He won't have to worry much about this one. Wisconsin from its own 20, and we'll go back to Tim Brando. Tim? North Carolina State. So far this half, Wisconsin has nine plays, no first down, and 12 total yards. Bevel had it tipped 
Incomplete intended for Doremus, and Bevels missed his last seven passes. I think it was Jay Davis who got a, a hand on that one on the curl pass. Very simple pass offense that Wisconsin's running. They've only had been sacked four times this year, and you can understand why. They do not send a lot of people out, and they run simple pass patterns. Everybody knows what's happening, and they play it close to the best and let their defense play football. Second and ten. Again, they run that sprint draw to burn. Well, they got three yards. Damon Watts came up from the number secondary. Number five. Number five, Damon Watts. Damon, a junior out of Indianapolis. Good out of Charlene Hawks. Brad, back in 1987, Coach Mallory dubbed this place the house, saying this is our house, nobody's going to beat us in our house. And as a visual aid, he has an oversized key that he shows the guys to remind them to lock the gates behind them. And they have it over by the door as they leave the locker room to go out to the field, and they all touch it. Since this place became the house, it's 24, 6, and 1. It's almost a packed house today for homecoming. They're looking for an undefeated homecoming record. Brad? Let's see if they lock the third down on the back. Wrong key. The 38-yard line is Doremus. First time he's been able to get loose. 11-yard pickup. First down, Wisconsin. Their initial first down of this half. Well, Doremus is their deep threat, but this time they got it coming across the zone on a shallow crossing route. And what you have to have here as a quarterback and a receiver is throw an accurate pass and have a lot of guts catching the football. You can see a good throw right there. Doremus makes a nice catch on it, gets into the secondary for a big first down. the 38 yard line play action that will get rid of it and completes it Aaron Brown made the catch in a first down at the 48 yard line of Indiana well Bevel is not your sprinting quarterback and doesn't have great running but he has the maneuverability in the pocket and really gets this ball out and he makes this play on his own because that was a sidearm throw and he really threw it about 35 yards for a big pass and first down. And this is kind of what he showed against Ohio State, the ability to make plays. First down in Indiana territory. Hoosiers almost jump offside. Burns somehow stuck through down inside the 40-yard line. Again, the Badgers' ground game so much better than it has been. And number two in the Big Ten, and they come in having outrushed their last five opponents. There's their numbers. Yeah, that, that's something that any coach would love to have is to turn around a record like that from 90-91 to this year. He's 166, and, you know, this game already, they probably over 100 yards rushing already. Well, I said over 100. Like working with Karnak up here. <laughs> Looks to be a first down run for Jason Burns. Bernard Whittington draped all over him, but but you know what? I think they're over 100 now. <laughs> and I think they've got their second first down of this half. And we'll have to wait until they measure. Chuck Bellin is down the top offensive lineman. And that's something Wisconsin's been very fortunate of, has been able to go with an offensive line all year and keep it intact. They haven't had a lot of injuries on this football team, and, and this is the type of thing that they need to keep intact because it's been the strength of their football team this year. It's really hard to figure out what, what's hurting them right now. Be hurting those two trainers when they get done picking yeah. them up. Duck's going to run it off. Little Brad in bring in the pack for get it. And if he looks big, he is. He's six foot three, three hundred pounds. First down, Wisconsin. Four sixteen left, third quarter. And Indiana in front three to nothing. There's a good look at Chuck. Senior out of Milwaukee. Wisconsin now at the 38-yard line of Indiana. First time they've been this deep in Hoosier territory in quite some time. Burns wrapped up as he got to the 34-yard line. The 
Badgers trying to go to five and two. They have not had a winning season since 1984. One of the things that Barry Alvarez has done with his team is with his salesmanship has really put them over the hump to this point. Now they believe in him. Now they believe they can win, not just compete. And that's why they're able to win these tight games. Second and six, Wisconsin. They go to the sprint draw the other way. Burns. Going to be close to another first down. Damon Watts tracked him down. Burns had an ankle injury in the season opener against Washington, and last week came back with a 92-yard effort in the win over Purdue, which was his best outing. Burns and Moss are a lot different. Burns likes to run outside in space. Moss is going to hit you inside with his hard run, bust, and tackle, so he gives them a good one-two combination. And remember, he also has and hoping to get Fletcher at any time where they'd be three deep at that position. Third down and a yard, a big one for Wisconsin. going to be very close. If he got a yard, it would be his 50th of the afternoon. Well, it's interesting, J Jay Davis, uh, you know, a position change sometimes is so important for a player. He was a backup defensive back until this year, and now he's found a position at linebacker, and he's able to run and move. He only weighs 205 pounds, but he's a good hitter. That's another first down. They got the first one by half the length of the football. That, that time they got it from the stripe up. And Barry Alvarez will take them any way you can get them. You'll see this play one more time from behind. For the first down, coming from the left side of your screen is the man who's going to make the play. Comes in and hits him. Gets hit by two people, really. That's what stops, stops with Whittington and Jay Davis. Deepest penetration since... The second quarter early for Wisconsin. Blitz. And complete to the 23, Mark Montgomery. No, now they're going to say no catch. One official overruled the other. Good call, I think. Yeah. Looks like a one-hopper. Yeah. A short hop for Montgomery. It's a good call unless you're a family member of that official who made the call right there on the sideline because he was standing right next to it. You'll see Beverly feels the pressure coming from the side. A little bit of a cop-out block by Jason Burns, number 44. He tried to cut his man. And that ball, look, uh, you really couldn't tell. It came in so low right there, whether it skipped or not. Montgomery didn't argue too much. Uh, well, you wonder if it didn't skip. Second attempt. Indiana's corners are squatting a lot. It looks like they could go deep to me. Burns got tagged at the line of scrimmage. Spun off for about a half yard. Al Thurman made the first contact and then Hammerstein and Whittington and company cleaned up. We talked to Joe Novak about his linebackers and he said that Al Thurman is really playing good football for him. He's a true sophomore and he's really filling in that hole at middle linebackers that is so important when you're running the 4-3. Thurman was in on 97 plays between defense and special teams against Michigan State. That's a lot of football. Wisconsin perfect on their third down conversions on this drive so far. Great play pick. Tipped. Jay Davis tipped it. Incomplete. Well, Jay Davis did an outstanding job that time because he had Michael Roan, the tight end on that bootleg, wide open for a first down. And Davis, who is about halfway in between the quarterback and the tight end, watch Roan come crossing and find that little hole right there. You see what Bevel sees to the left side. And it looked closer from this angle than he actually was. There was about 8 yards or 10 yards of space between him and the receiver. Rich Thompson 0 for 1, having missed from 20. This one's from 45 to try to tie it, and he knocked it right down the middle. We're dead even at three apiece. <laughs> We're sure now that she is She's a Wisconsin, Wisconsin fan. fan. That's right. 3-3 <laughs> three, three with 127 left. We'll go back to Tim Brando. Brando. The key to that drive was their ability to throw. The beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste. Why not make a change for the better? Refreshingly different, but dry. You look like 
with over 140,000 on-road and off-road miles. I must be in and out of it 150 times a day. It's a wonder the doors don't fall off. Only trouble was, the pig charge caved in my door. I only used AC Delco. Cheaper parts can cost you a powerful lot. Of course, so can pigs. AC Delco parts. It's like buying time. have any sport right at your fingertips. Just put this in your hand. The Casio Sports Vision Color TV. It's perfect for the sport in your life. The Casio Sports Vision Color TV. Available at service merchandise. Green was that he was going out of bounds. Now watch Trent Green get up and he just gives an earful to Gary Casper. Casper on course right now to become the all-time leading career tackler to pass Tim Crumry in the Wisconsin yearbook. But that one cost him big, and Indiana has a first down at the 43-yard line. Well, outside of the long run by Bats, and the big running plays have been made by Trent Green in this game. Brett Law, the Indiana tailback. On first down, Green goes deep. Got it. Thomas Lewis, 23 yards. I have to believe that this was an audible by Trent Green this time. It was an eight-man front. He saw it. You're going to see Lewis come inside, and it was Dwight Reese, number 86, that's going to have to try to get underneath this one, but a perfect route by Thomas Lewis, and watch how this ball is thrown to the sideline. Only Lewis is going to be able to catch it. Good job by Trent Green, and a nice route by that man right there, Thomas Lewis. A junior out of Akron, Ohio, with his biggest play of the day, his fourth catch and a first down at the 21-yard line of Wisconsin. Indiana on the seventh play of this drive, and it's Brett Law's first carry, and he got about two as we go back to Tim Brando. Down to Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Brad. Sherman Williams takes the handoff from Jay Barker, and Williams gets in. Brian Lee has added a field goal moments ago for Ole Miss, 24-10 Bama. Williams with a little shake, rattle, and roll going on. I don't think we'll see that move out of Bill Mallory today. 14 minutes left. Tie game, and it's second and seven. Indiana back in the red zone of the Badgers. Look to see if Wisconsin doesn't come after him here. Here comes the blitz. Incomplete. Green trying to get it out to McGowan. Well, Wisconsin is blitzing seven. This time they blitzed seven people, and Indiana's sending out three receivers and are covering them all man-to-man, -man, and they are not bumping. They're letting them have that hitch, and Trent has not been able to pick up that easy throw for first down yardage. A third down coming up. Bunnell, no doubt, an anxious kicker. Yet, Wisconsin's going to come in with their nickel package. Indiana's missed its last nine third down conversions, but they did convert a fourth down, remember, to keep this drive going. Third and six. 
seven. Here come the Badgers again. Green, incomplete intended for Lewis. Penalty marker down in the Hoosier backfield. Let's see if we have a holding call on top of it. And don't be surprised if Wisconsin doesn't take this penalty to get him out of field goal range. In a 3-3 game, I wouldn't be shocked to see him take it, even though it's fourth down. Wisconsin talking over the options, and Barry Alvarez is saying what Gary already told you, I think. Let's walk this one off. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, third down. So the line of scrimmage becomes the 33-yard line. We talk a lot about disguising a blitz. You're going to see a perfect example right here. You're going to see everybody has a man right here, but watch how they sneak in and move up after Trent Green gets underneath the center right here. So now Trent gets up. He says, okay, I've got a zone. Now he goes under. Now watch the defense sneak up. That's disguising a blitz and keeps everyone off balance. Good job by the secondary. Third down at 17, Indiana. They're coming again. Green deep for Lewis. He can't get back to it. I think somebody hit Green as he threw, and that one just did not have enough on it. Lewis was open. And if you could see Trent Green from behind, he is telling his backs, especially his running backs, to get up and block people because everyone's coming into his face and he's going to have to throw early. You see it, he's got someone right in his face and he's not able to throw and follow through and that was really the problem that time. Taking the penalty pays off and forces a punting situation for Indiana. De Julio's done a great job when he's aired his punts out today but he's had a little trouble trying to kick it in the corner. Let's see how he does on this one. Well, he got that one inside the 20. Not very far inside the 20. We'll spot it down at the 15-yard line. That's where the Wisconsin Badgers will have it when we come back. Want to break a European's heart? Let him test drive a Buick Park Avenue Ultra for two weeks, then take it away. You see, the Ultra, with its supercharged engine, luxury appointments, and Buick quality, is built in such limited quantities, it's just not... What I want. Let's go back and look at that play one more time when he had Thomas Lewis. You can see Wisconsin is blitzing. This is Michael Batts right here. He is going to have to pick up Aaron Norvell. That's who gets in his face. He needs to get closer to the line of scrimmage. He gets run over on this play. And you're going to see why Trent Green was upset that he didn't have time to hit this wide open pass because he has the linebacker right in his face. Burns has the Indiana defense in his face, led by Troy Drake, number 66, and Lamar Mills, 92. They combine on the stop and force a third down Wisconsin situation. I think when Wisconsin was effective in moving the ball, they relied on Bevel to get outside the pocket and throw some passes. I don't think they're going to be able to move and mash the ball down the field against Indiana. Indiana will just keep moving guys up to stop the run. Let's see how the 22-year-old redshirt freshman does on this third down. There he is, moving out of the pocket. And there's the completion for a first down at the 30. He throws very well on the run, especially to the left, and most quarterbacks find that a little easier to throw to your left than to your right, which is contrary to what most people feel about it. And the reason is, it's like shooting a jump shot in basketball, and if you vision Larry Bird, you kind of turn your shoulder to the basket, and that's what you do as a quarterback. When you have that arm facing downfield, it makes a much accurate throw. Larry Bird was here for a little while, he decided to face downfield to a different school, too. <laughs> the one that got away. First down, Wisconsin, with 12 minutes left in the ball game. Well, Burns is spinning for all it's worth. John Miller made first contact. Al Thurman cleaned up. Burns is really having to pay for his yardage today, but he's had some tough runs. But Wisconsin in this fourth quarter has the wind at their back and they have a hot kicker, so they have to feel good about the situation in this game with 11 and a half minutes to go. Blitz. Wisconsin picked it up from one side, 
But Bevel trying to run away from the other side. The 33 yard line. And they're going to call a late hit on this one, which is really, as a coach, has got to make you wonder. And anytime you hit a quarterback like that is when you get him. Might have been Al Thurman. So they walk off the penalty. It'll ball. give Wisconsin first a first down. On the defense, first down. And let's go into the stands to Charlene Hawks. Brad, yesterday I talked to the Wisconsin leading tackler Aaron Norvell. He said he's not sure he even would have made it to college if it weren't for this man, his dad, Merritt. Now, Merritt, you were on the 63 Wisconsin Rose Bowl team. You now do radio commentary for Wisconsin home games with one son on the field and one son as the receivers coach. How do you remain objective? <laughs> well, my main objective right now is a parent to really enjoy this game because it's the only chance I get when the out-of-town games and I get to scream and holler and give my own opinions about what's good and what's bad in my own way. So uh, that's, I'm really enjoying it. There's you know what's Norvell. What's really uh, uh, impressive there is the seats that Jay and Aaron Norvell got from his dad and then the seats that Lee Corso got for his friend. That's right. There. It's a big difference, that's for sure. Merritt, how do you assess your son's performance on the field today and, and the whole uh, Badger defense? Well, I think that the biggest problem today is the Badger defense on a very hot day has been out there too long. I'd like to see the offense pick it up and give them a chance to, to give them a rest because they get down in the end of the fourth quarter and Indiana's driving the ball. It's a very hot day and it's going to be tough on the defense. But, you know, this is what they run sprints for at the end of practice. Okay, well, thank you very much. Good luck today. You're welcome. Thank you. Guys. Merritt, also on the University of Wisconsin reset Athletic Board. That's how you clock. get good seats, I guess. Please reset the <laughs> clock to 10.45. Thank you. We're going to add six seconds on to our clock with a 3-3 game. Iowa-Purdue tied at halftime. Boilermakers had a 16-6 lead on the Wisconsin Badgers took, last week. Took the words right out of my mouth. I don't look at those scores until they're over. <laughs> Second down and nine. Badgers. From the 48. Lamar Mills. First sack of the day, and it's way back. And he three. has a bad left shoulder bevel, and he got it driven into the ground that time. It was a bootleg, and you wonder if how that's going to affect it. You're going to see a naked bootleg right here. He's going to fake it and keep it. There's no blocking. First, Whittington stays home. And then from the backside, Lamar Wills. And watch him drive him into the ground on that left shoulder. And that's really what kept him out of the game last week in the second half. First sack of the day. Mills got it. And forces a third and 20 for Wisconsin. Whitefield shovel pass here. Loads it. Was hit as he threw. It's a jump ball and it's intercepted. Lance Brown and his band of renown got it back for the end. Besides the crowd getting back into this football game on interception, it's really inconsequential whether that ball was picked off because that's really as good as a punt right there. And that's what Barry Alvarez and Dan McCartney have to tell them. Their defense is it's just like a punt. Punt, go out there and play it. You see he's going to get hit just as he left this football go, I believe. Actually, he just misfired on it. He felt that man coming up the middle. A Troy Drake, number 66. The Ramos tries to break up the pass, but it's intercepted. Indiana takes over at its own 34-yard line. Green is going to go down. That's the fifth sack of the day, and that's Lamar Shackerford, uh, the nose tackle who's playing so well for Wisconsin. When you watch Wisconsin's defense play, Brad, this guy just keeps popping up over and over again, Shackerford. He makes a lot of plays in the backfield, and he's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's a little arm rip action, gets by the center. Remember, that's the third center for Indiana to be playing this year uh, uh, in their offensive line. Lamarck Shackerford was the last player signed by Barry Alvarez in his first season as coach at Wisconsin. On that play, he's happy he got him, that's for sure. Second and 19. going to put him over 100 in his first start in a crimson uniform. 
We talked to Bill Mallory yesterday about what's life like without Anthony Thompson or Vaughn Dunbar. And he said, well, it's different, I gotta tell you that. 104 yards now by the true freshman up from the scout team just a couple weeks ago. 18 carries for 104. 20 on that one. First down, Indiana. There's the time left. Just under nine minutes. shot Thomas Lewis and Lewis took a shot from Nelson in the secondary as we go back to the studios and Tim Brando Brad I've got a big eight on and we'll be down at Lincoln to bring you that one here it's 3-3 with 8.51 left in the fourth quarter these teams hoping that they are bowl bound at the end of the year the survivor of this one might get a leg up on the other Well, this time, Trent Green goes to the short side of the field. You're going to see a little six-yard hitch. You get the right call on again against the zone. And a good pass gets the ball to him quickly, and McGowan is able to beat him down the sideline. Manley cannot make the play. First down at the 32. So after stalling at times today, Scott McGowan's 21-yard pickup helps Indiana move in a hurry to the Wisconsin 32-yard line. Well, I think it was a good idea, and I think it was an audible at the line of scrimmage, but what you have to do when you throw that thing is keep it inside the field. Even if he was wide open, he let him a little bit too far. A little hitch pattern to the outside. Top of the field, he's going to kind of, remember, he just hit the pitch in front of him, but this time Manley does not bite enough. Pretty good coverage, but you see the ball sail to the outside. You have to keep it inside the boundary. Indiana facing a win. Second and 10 at the 32. Bats trying to cut back, and it cost him some yardage. Scott Nelson from the secondary made the hit. You really have to take those types of plays with a great running back. And if Bats is going to ever break these types of plays, he's going to have to learn in the Big Ten. He's going to have to know when to cut back and know when to get whatever you can out of a running play. And that time he just got a little too anxious trying to make a big play out of the number. Got to know when to hold him and when to fold him. There's a guy kicking on the sideline that wants a chance to try to put Indiana in front. Indiana's come up dry the last 10 times on third down, and this is third and 12. Blitz. They pick it up, and Green goes deep for Lewis. Wisconsin knows that 
it's got to get a touchdown in the next 746 and then play for two if they can get one to try to win this game. Well, with the Big Ten standings and everything, you wonder now, coming down, what the tie down means and what's a, a two-point play. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Wisconsin got down there. They wouldn't walk away with a tie and be happy with it. Right now, the Badgers in second place and the Big Ten behind Michigan. And remember, they don't play Michigan this year, right. so I think a tie looks good on their power. Into a win, Von Ellison. Extra incentive into that kick, knocked it nine yards deep. Fred, you called it right on this. Wisconsin blitzed again, and when you blitz a lot, you have to put pressure on the quarterback. Remember when Lewis was open before? This time, the backs and the line does a good job, gives Trent Green that space to throw it. But what Thomas Lewis does is so nice on this play was the first angle. To beat someone deep, you not only have to have the speed, but you have to make one more move, and that last more move that he made on Messenger was the one that turned him around, and that allowed him to beat Messenger for the six points. Capped a 65-yard drive in a little over two minutes. Now Darrell Bevel's got to get Wisconsin going. He'll try to do it on the ground, and a quick opener for Burns. Got him a first down. Chris Dyer holding on for dear life. Burns got 11, and he was only a man away from breaking that big. There's seven and a half minutes left in this football game, and what I think you're going to have to see Wisconsin do is, yes, keep running the football, but they're going to have to throw on more early downs to move this secondary back. They don't want it to come down to just one or two drives. They want to take advantage of the clock. Well, we see some. Here's Burns again, and he's going to go down for a loss this time. Lamar Mills has had quite a game. You can start your college football Saturday with college game there. It's just under seven minutes remaining from Bloomington, Indiana, with the homecoming Hoosiers in front by seven. Bevel over the middle, almost intercepted. Doremus had his hands on it, and then Jay Davis took his hands and his body and everything else away from it. I think you're right. Jay Davis did a good job of reacting to that throw. But what's happening in Wisconsin by running, continuing on first down and coming into these situations where you get long yardage now with being behind, they're going to face a nickel on second down, and that's what Indiana gave them that time, five defensive backs. Wisconsin had the big edge in the first half in total yardage. The boys have been Indiana this half. Third down at 13. Draw play. Burns. He won't get 13 on it. Got back to the 33-yard line. Al Furman met him there. And it's time to punt for Wisconsin. Sam Bite to kick. And Scott McGowan will go back for Indiana. at the 29-yard line with 6.02 left in the ball game. Indiana with the ball and a seven-point lead. Got a little scrum going on across the field over there. With I think it's 3-3. 3-3 three, three. Yeah, three, three there. <laughs> we had 3-3 three, three here until Thomas Lewis got our first touchdown of the day. 34-yard pass play from Trent Green. And there's Thomas, number eight has the only touchdown of the afternoon. We talked to Bill Mallory yesterday. We talked about Lewis not being able to get the ball deep, and he said it had been a problem. Last year, he averaged almost 15 yards a catch. This year, he's been under 12, averaging 11.7. Because of that running game, they've had to throw more short passes to him, so it's good for the Indiana game that they get him deep. Well, now the ball game's theirs if they can use six minutes. Got to hold on to the ball. Freshman is already over 100 yards, gets three more. As we go to Tim Brando. Tim? Florida playing Louisville on a sandwich. 539 and ticking down on the Wisconsin Badgers. Indiana trying to win its fourth game of the year and go even in the Big Ten at 2-2. Two two. Second 
second down and seven. And Bats got it to the 38-yard line. Still about two yards short for first down as we go to Charlene Hawks. Brad, Indiana's defensive coordinator, Joe Novak, had a very short and sweet message for his defensive unit. He quieted them down first, and then he cupped his hands, and he said, it's right here for the picking. Go get it. And that was it. He took off, and the rest of the guys said, dominate. Brad? Well, if they can pick up two yards on offense right here, they're going to be that one step closer to having it in their hands. They spread out with three wide receivers and bats. The single setback gets the call. First down, Indiana. Mike Thompson made the tackle, but not before Bats got it across the 40-yard line. Well, I know Bill Mallory on the outside is not smiling right now, but inside he's all smiles because he might have found himself a guy who can run the ball with authority up the middle and have the speed to get outside. You know, we saw Brett Law a couple weeks ago with against Missouri in those big yards, but you didn't see that explosive speed that Bats looked like he had. Four minutes now from the 42-yard line, another Indiana first down. This time, Bats is dropped for a loss by Thompson. Wow. This game was a battle of field goals and punts for much of it. But field goals by Thompson and Bunnell had it tied at three until Lewis finally scored a touchdown for the alumni on hand today. Nice play fake and Green and the naked bootleg will keep it. Polk stayed home pretty nicely and dragged him out of bounds to the 45-yard line. Yeah, it still was a 10, almost a 10-yard gain though, which is a good play for Indiana. A very safe play and a play that can get him outside the corner. Remember a year ago. He scored on a naked play towards the end of the game where he kept it also. So I don't know what Trent Green is saying right there. We don't understand. The Bats has been the offensive story for Indiana with 111 yards. And the Hoosiers, 10 unanswered points, has them in front. And remember a year ago, they had 28 unanswered points in the second half. Third down and seven. Wisconsin's got a hold here to give their offense another chance. Complete, intended for Lewis. Henry Sorcy on the coverage. And it's time to punt, and that stops the clock with 317 left. So Wisconsin's going to get it back. Remember, DeGiulio had an 86 yard punt earlier in this ballgame. <laughs> Yeah. That's even hard to say. It is. <laughs> I've had enough trouble just saying Jim DeGiulio, much less 86 yard punt. And Wisconsin's got 10 men coming after him, and they block it. Oh, why did he not just take that thing right into the end zone? I don't know why he fell down on that one. It's your ball no matter what. He had a touchdown from there. He just wouldn't have taken that play and safely fell down. DeGiulio would like to have some of that 86 yards back for this one. Badgers take over at the 32-yard line. I think Barry's going to say all you have to do is catch that and run into the end zone, Jamel. Jamel Brown says, Coach, I didn't know that. <laughs> you'll see it, it comes from up the middle that Corey time. Manley got Corey Manley it. makes the play. He's got his arm. Now everybody's looking for the ball. Here's the Wisconsin opportunity now. A 309 left. Burns. Cuts outside. And he's got close to 10 yards before Indiana can track him down. John Miller and Damon Watts finally bring down Jason Burns. Well, I'll tell you, Jason Burns puts on a stop move on that play and just freezes his man and goes to the outside because there wasn't any great blocking. Inside, it looked like they turned someone loose right away. Let's see who it is. Defensive Burns. tackle that time. Friedman was Hammerstein, number 63, was just completely free, and he just beat him. Burns 
with a first down. And he's got it down to the 16-yard line. Watts made the tackle, but Burns putting on some nice moves. They get the first down for the Badgers. He does have a nice jump move. This time it was Chris Dyer, number 16, who grabbed a pocket full of air. I think Burns is going to say he's tired. I need to take a break after those two runs. Remember, they're in that situation again, a little bit better than last time. They had first and goal almost from the 10, 10 yard line and an inch. This time they have it from the 15. First down. The 15, and that's it. Brent Moss brought down by Bernard Whittington. Number 10, Miles Richardson, one of the tacklers. Well, Michigan's having Bernard trouble with the Gophers. 63 points for the Wolverines. Corey Manley is the guy that set Wisconsin up. He is the man that recovered a block punt in the end zone last year for a Wisconsin touchdown. Today, his block has given the offense an opportunity. Second and eight. Battle in the end zone. But he couldn't get his feet down. But well, that was misjudged by the corner, and that had to be real close to being complete. Remember, he only had to have one foot in there. And I'm not sure who exactly it was. But that ball was completely misjudged by the corner, and he, that was almost a touchdown on a really a throw that shouldn't have been thrown. Right at the end of this play, you're going to see the corner look to it like it was Moe Richardson, number 10. And he comes down with one foot on the line. Great call. Great call at one. Third and eight, two down territory for the Badgers, obviously. Battle under a blitz. Across the middle. And it's first and goal at the three. Mark Montgomery made the catch. Well, you talk about making something out of nothing this time. This was a busted play. There's no doubt. Back went the wrong way. And Bevel was confused from the beginning. Watch both backs go to the left on this play. And there's no one there when he's trying to throw this ball. Everyone is confused. He has to break out. And now he hits it to Montgomery on a little bit of a trailer route for a huge first down. They needed 11 on third and eight. On third and eight, they needed eight and got 11. And a first down when we come back. Gary Danielson and Charlene Hawks. I'm Brad Nessler at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington with 1.31 left in the game. 10-3 Indiana. But Barry Alvarez, Badgers have it at the Hoosiers three-yard line. Will Mallory hoping for a defensive stand. Badger fans hoping for a touchdown, and then a big decision. But still, they're three yards away from that decision. Penalty markers, a whistle blew at the snap. Boy. Take a timeout. You get everybody ready over there on the sideline, and somebody moves in the interior line, and you get a five-yard penalty. Instead of first and goal from the three, you got to do it from the eight. You want to be a head coach? Boy, does that change your thinking from the eight-yard line instead of the three. Dead ball, Dead ball. false start on the offense. Would you please reset the clock to one minute, 41 seconds? 141, they want on the clock instead of 128. Well, now, Indiana's fans are booing because of the clock, but in reality, they may want that time back if Wisconsin comes in to score. I think it should be 131. Yeah, I think, they did, I think they did change it back to 131. I was going to say, unless we gain time coming back with the commercial. Well, it is. We're not going to spring forward and fall back there. I mean. <laughs> there we go. 131 left. The Badgers have had some fantastic finishes in the last four weeks. And Barry Alvarez says one thing my guys haven't done. They haven't flinched yet. to the one-yard line. Mark Montgomery, his second big catch on this drive. Mark Montgomery, Montgomery is such a valuable Mark football Montgomery. player for this team right here. John He's able to block, he picks up blitzes, he carries tough yards, and he can catch. And anybody who's ever played football knows how valuable a fullback is who can come out of the backfield and make these types of plays. And Bevel, again, shows his accuracy is really paying off. And as a freshman, he's got a great future for him in the Big Ten. Well, if you're back in Madison and you're wringing your hands hoping for another yard, then you've got a decision. Second and goal, Burns. Now it's going to be about three yards. 
Yeah. Well, Thurman over the top made the tackle. And I think from the outside, though, a submarine that they had a, a slant coming from everyone, and they just sold out an inside running play. And from, I think it was Hammerstein, number 63, who really slants it in. 118 with a timeout. We'll take a break and come back to Bloomington in a moment. At BASF, we don't make the meal, we make it healthier. We don't make the lotion, we make it smoother. We don't make the dress, we make it brighter. We don't make the carpet, we make it tougher. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. It's coming, October 29th, and it will change the way you feel about everything you see. From Sony. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, clapper. Still going, nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going and going. United Airlines now flies you non-stop to London's Heathrow from six U.S. cities. Come fly the friendly skies. One eighteen remaining in the ball game. Wisconsin trailing by seven. Eighth play of their drive, and it's third and goal. Just outside the Hoosiers' two-yard line. Trying to throw for it. They come back to the tight end and overshot it. Fourth and goal. Let's give John Miller, the senior, credit on this play number 40. He stayed at home. He did his assignment because this was a call play. It was a tight end delay. And John Miller just stuck with his man Roan that time and did not fall for the rollout or anything. And that was really what made it a tough throw. Right out of the Green Bay Packer playbook. How many of those did Ed West, number 86, catch for the Packers? That time, Roan couldn't get to it. It is fourth down. The Badgers are one for one on fourth down today and seven out of eight on the season. And here is the ball game. Bevel. play that's a nice call down near the goal line in short yarded situations you fake the isolation play or the fullback and you try to pop the tight end behind the hitting linebackers watch Roan left side of your play he's going to hit and then come through he's got him open but Roan kind of ran across the opening that time and kind of confused Bevel on it he was open there if he had just stopped in the end zone he had an easy touchdown Wisconsin has only one time out to stop it Red Green will take a knee. Gary Casper comes in and lets him have it anyway. Boy, we talked about turning the corner and down to the wire. Bevel did a lot of nice things in that drive, but he really had that last pass that both he and the tight end were just not quite on the same page. And let's give credit to that Indiana defense. They really stood in there. Remember, they lost some key players, and it was a great goal line stand. The Hoosiers are 4-0-1 in the last five years at homecoming. We're about to add another one in the win column and a snap. They need to take a timeout right now. Wisconsin will use its last timeout here with 24 seconds left. Timeout being signaled. Timeout, Wisconsin. Four seconds left, and this game for Bill Mallory is going to be gigantic 
as they go to four and three and even in the conference at two and two and likewise Wisconsin will fall to two and two and Indiana has a nice conference home schedule remaining they play Iowa and Ohio State at home yet in this schedule so they really feel good about their opportunity and chances Wisconsin just has to regroup I mean it has been down to the wire for them all the way in this season you really got to like that guy Bevel and that man right there John Miller made a tremendous play on third down and give him credit for it he stayed in this playbook he hasn't played a lot of football being hurt he came back and did an assignment and that overthrow to wrong give him credit nice play John I think John Miller said it all, looked at the camera and said, tough one. <laughs> and a tough one for Aaron Brown of the Badgers, who were hoping to get their first win on the road this season, or even the tie. That tie, they definitely take it now if they had the opportunity. They won't have that opportunity either. As Indiana, in front of their homecoming crowd, is going to survive this one. The number two spot in the Big Ten no longer belongs to just Wisconsin. The Hoosiers are going to win it 10-3, the final over the Wisconsin Badgers. That'll wrap it up for Bloomington. Charlene Hawks and Gary Danielson and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Brad Nessler saying so long. See you next week. 10-3, the final. Indiana wins it as we go back to Chris, Craig, and Lee in the studios. Guys. Thank you very much, Brad. Welcome back. We'll catch you updated in the next few minutes on what's gone on so far today in college football. We'll start in the Big Ten. Michigan, clearly, the Wolverine waltz all the way to Pasadena. Midway, fourth quarter, 63-13. The Wolverines on their way to a 17th consecutive Big Ten victory. It'll tie Ohio State's all-time record, Alexander, four touchdowns. Illinois, leading Northwestern, 19-3 at halftime. Jason Radusco has a two-yard touchdown run for the Illini. Iowa team with just one Big Ten loss in the chase for the Citrus Bowl, leading...